before we get into the news aspect, I want to show something that 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 totally um made me happy today, and, I, and I'm so shocked by it. <laughs> I'm so shocked by it. So hopefully y'all can see this. So I posted this tweet um, yesterday. I said, homosexuality is an abomination. Abortion is the shedding of innocent blood. Being a harlot is immoral. And drag queens are abominable. I said, these are biblical truths. I refuse to align with wickedness. And if anybody needs the scriptural references, uh, homosexuality is an abomination in Leviticus 20 and Leviticus 18 and in Romans 1. Uh, abortion is the shedding of innocent blood. That is Proverbs 6, 17. Uh, being a harlot is immoral. That, that falls under the guideline of sexual immorality which also shows, um, you know, adulterous and things of that nature. So that's all over the place in many different ways, fornication. Uh, and drag queens are abominable. Bond- that's Deuteronomy 22, chapter 5, if people wanted to know the um, scriptural references. Uh, and also, before I show this, shout out to everybody that watched Fearless yesterday, and shout out to Jason Whitlock, Fashley, having me on his platform, on the blaze, like knowing how controversial I am. The same thing with my sponsors, bro. The people that support me, and I, I understand. I'm I, I'm not crazy. I'm very well aware that the stuff I say could get me banned on a lot of platforms. Um, so the people that support me, like like Jason Woodlock, got his own show on the Blaze. A bunch of viewers and be be bringing me on there. So shout out to him, of course. Um, but for the reason I, I was shocked at this tweet because as I was just saying, I was very well. I I was very aware that this tweet could either get get me suspended or have a lot of people that hate me. I'm not talking about liberals. Liberals already don't like me, but a lot of a lot of people on the right don't like stuff like this either. They think we're too extreme. They think we lose voters, and they pit politics over God, as we all experienced earlier this week. Um, so I was surprised by this, by this right here. This had. 256,000 views, 10.7 thousand likes, and 1,400 retweets on a tweet like this. And this tweet made me happy because it, it, it it's like, yo, there's a lot of us out there. There are really a lot of us out there, man. And, and this, this made me happy. This, this is like a good white pill, bro, because... I was I was so shocked when this thing sort of like went like semi viral because you know biblical truths get lost nowadays and you still had a lot of uh soft right wingers um you know get mad at it oh this makes our side look bad shut up um I mean it listen Satan is tricky. The way Satan works is he normalizes it first. So the first thing he does is he has to normalize it. Put it in the TV shows, uh, put it in, like, promote it in schools, commercials, make it seem like they're a victim. Uh, and once they do that, that's, gonna, that's going to influence the next generation. So now you got kids that's gay, cousins that's gay, uncles that's gay, nieces that's gay, friends that's gay. And once you have people that, that close to you are like gay, then you're going to become soft on the issue. You're going to, you know, most people will become soft. And well, I used to be more so, but now I'm like live and let live and, you know, hate the sin, not the sinner, you know, all that type of nonsense. Um, and, um, yeah. So this is just, you know, this is just, I just want all of y'all to see that. Cause I know a lot of y'all in the comment section think that, you know, there's not a lot of us, but I, I feel like this tweet and the and this pretty much proves that uh, there are a lot of us. So let's get into this news. Hopefully, we can get all into it. I have to be on um, uh, another show tonight. I'm gonna let y'all know what time I'll be on this other show, so y'all can watch it if y'all want to. If, if y'all don't know who Chrissy Mayer is, she's a comedian. Uh, she's like a right wing comedian. I'll be on there at 8 p.m. So I got to finish this before eight. <laughs> All right. So the first news of the day, what we got here, boys. First, we got the silliest one to date. Joe Byron. Joe Biden. Here we go again. If y'all wonder what do we work so hard for? It is really to support Ukraine. 
is really to support Ukraine. Um, so as you see, the U.S. will supply M1 tanks to Ukraine. Germany approves lepers because Germany also approved it earlier. Uh, earlier, also, we're sending them 31 of our premier battle tanks to Ukraine. Um, now, and by the way, it's, it's NATO supporting them. And, and, and the reason this is so funny, the reason this is so funny is because if a lot of y'all don't know how the Russia Ukraine situation happened, uh, Putin clearly stated it, but a lot of us already knew beforehand. Uh, our government has been warned multiple times if we keep trying to expand NATO closer into the territory of Russia, they will respond aggressively. Okay? Uh, and NATO, to me, is just a power play to control the whole world. I think NATO is the equivalent of globalism. It just isn't called globalism. Um, and they were trying to have... Ukraine joined NATO, which Russia responded with aggression, which is which is which is which is literally what we expected to happen. And y'all can look this up. There's actually a visual map to show you over the years how close we've been expanding NATO to Russia. And that is why Russia responded to Ukraine in that way. So it, it is literally our fault and is Ukraine fault. Matter of fact, so much so that Ukraine actually backed out of NATO. But for some odd reason, you see all the NATO countries helping Ukraine. Um, and it literally brings it up in this article. For NATO, founded as a defensive alliance in the wake of World War II, the supply of battle tanks and hundreds of other armored vehicles also being transferred to Ukraine is a, pre is a prelude to what is shaping up to be ground warfare of a scale not seen in Europe for more than seven decades. With the United States and its allies insist they have no desire to engage Russia directly, the decision significantly upped the ante of how far they are willing to help evict Putin forces. Now, for all of y'all who are scared of a war potentially happening, let's just be clear. We're literally helping Ukraine fight Russia. How do you think Russia is going to take that? How do you think Russia is going to view that? Now, this should be clear-cut common sense, in my opinion, uh, but Biden is literally trying to drive us into a war. And though I've been criticizing Trump a lot lately because he deserves it, because he's been doing a lot of trash stuff lately, I believe that Trump would not have had us in this situation. That's what I believe. I do not believe, because if you watch Trump interviews, he, uh, Trump was sort of against NATO. Um, Trump also... Um, said he respected Putin. Uh, I do not think this would have happened. I do not think gas prices would have dropped. I, 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 I think Trump would have had us in a better situation, especially with foreign policy and how, re, how we responded to foreign uh, situations. Um, so I, I'm just letting y'all know that this is, um, I mean, this is happening. This is, is literally, is literally, is, li is literally happening. Um, that's why, Let's go, Brandon, um, because Joe Biden is a, like Joe Biden. I don't think people understand how terrible Joe Biden is. He's literally pulling pulling us uh, into a potential war, and a lot of people don't understand that. Um, so I guess uh, all these Democrats with Ukraine flags in their bio, happy we're giving all our money to Ukraine, happy we're providing tanks to Ukraine, happy we're aiding Ukraine and and going against Putin. A lot of people, a lot of people on the right do it too because they're anti-Putin, and um, they're going to take us into a war. I mean, so, you know, prepare, stack up, do whatever you have to do. Uh, one more time, the $10. Thank you so much. You're saying what most people are thinking. Um, that's one of the reasons I do it, bro. Because I feel like a lot of people feel a lot of ways about things that's happening in this country, but a lot of people are afraid to say it due to persecution. You know what I'm saying? So there has to be somebody to stand up and be like, so? So what? I'm going to say it. Uh, um... Sharon Devaney with the five dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, but uh, we just hit two hundred viewers in the chat. Please hit the like button. What are you waiting on? Please hit the like button. What are you waiting on? Let's see if we can break what we did yesterday so I can get the times right. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I, I don't believe Trump would have had us in this situation. I find the things like people think got like people think. Oh, Bryson hates Trump now. No, I, I'm just honest. When people do. Trash stuff. I'm gonna call it trash. But I'm honest. Trump would not have had us in here because Trump didn't have any wars going on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he didn't have any wars going on. So like this, this, this literally wasn't what's happening right now was a non-issue when Trump was in office. So you know, 
Let's get to the next thing. And I have a, I have a video to show y'all because this, this is quite hilarious. Uh, McCarthy blocks Democrats uh, Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell from Intelligence Committee. Um, if y'all don't know, uh, years ago, this, this happened to us. And, you know, a Democrat-led House, they stripped Marjorie Taylor Greene, as it says here, and Paul Gozar of their committee assignments in 2021. Um, and McCarthy just did the same thing to Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell. And, I mean, uh, he, you know, Kevin McCarthy claims it wasn't revenge, but of course it was revenge because you have to uh, sort of placate to the conservatives that wasn't trying to vote for you because you're a rhino. Um, and I, 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 I don't really like or dislike what you did right here. I mean, it's kind of petty, which is kind of fun a little bit. Um, but, I mean, I, I do find it funny. I'm not going to lie. Um, and you're trying to do this to get people on your side, to get people to like you, but you're still a rhino. I don't care who's who endorse you. You're you're a rhino in my eyes. I don't know if y'all in the chat agree. If y'all in the chat agree with me, let me know. Do you agree that Adam, uh, not Adam Schiff? I mean, obviously he's trash. But uh, do y'all agree that uh, Kevin McCarthy is a rhino? Uh, I, I'm just making sure. The finally true said you heard Putin is negotiating with the Taliban to purchase of the weapons left behind in the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. No, I haven't heard of that. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just think McCarthy is trash, but what's funny about this, I want to play out a video because if y'all, if, if y'all read this article, um, <laughs> Ilhan Omar literally said, uh, you know, they was, they don't know if he's going to try to, you know, bar her too from the committee, intelligence committee. And this is her response to this. These Democrats are so fake and fraudulent. And I think y'all should be able to hear this time. So. In modern American history, the punishment of stripping a member of Congress of their committee assignments has been reserved for only the most egregious wrongdoings. Those convicted or indicted on corruption, those who have engaged in bribery, sexual misconduct, encouraged violence. Sharon, thank you so much for the $5 again. God bless you. Or other grief charges. I have served on the foreign, not only House Foreign Affairs Committee and the House Education and Labor Committee for the past two terms, committees that I have lived experience and expertise in. As a child who survived war, lived in a refugee camp, I would have never imagined that I would one day have the opportunity to serve on a subcommittee on Africa Global Health and global human rights. I would not have believed that I would one day not just serve as the first African-born member of Congress, but on a committee that oversees policies towards the continent. Kevin McCarthy's purely partisan move to strip us from our committee is not only a political stunt, but also a blow to the integrity of our democratic institution and threat to our national security. Threat to our national security. I the first African born shut up. Oh my goodness! Like she, she's annoying me so much, y'all. It took everything from me not to like truly interrupt. Saudi just said Africa. She brought up Africa. Like, well, like who are you trying to pan into with that crap? Uh, now it's a threat to national security, but was it a threat to national security when you did it to uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and to Paul Gozar? Or was it not? Of course it wasn't. I bet you you praised that effort. Oh, my goodness. These people are so fake, dog. These people are so fake, bro. Give me a break. We are thankful to leader Jeffries and House Democrats and even some courageous Republicans for standing with us. If McCarthy wants to denigrate the integrity of the House and its committees, we will always stand up to these efforts. I am grateful for the confidence of my constituents and my colleagues have shown me to serve on these committees and I look forward to continuing that work of building. Shut up. You're literally, uh, you literally married your brother. Listen, uh, listen. And the reason I played the full video because I don't want to be one of those conservatives that gives you half of the piece just to own the liberals. I want you to actually listen to them in, in the entire context because they are that silly. Um, like, literally, 
Y'all did the same thing. And none of this applied. Now, granted, people on the right do it too. So I'm not saying, I'm not at all saying this is just a thing exclusive to liberals, but they tend to be the most fakest people though. Like I said, like I said, conservatives do it too. But my goodness, all that threat to democracy, Kevin McCarthy's the worst person. Like, yes, he's trash. But bro, better than me. Because if I was a nerd, first off, you would have got stripped of whatever. Whatever I could legally strip you of, you would be stripped. You shouldn't even have a citizenship here. You married your brother. Get the stones. Get the stones. <laughs> Get the stones. I, I need a dang on sound thing. I say, get the stones. <laughs> Listen, man. My bad, y'all. My bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all can't let these people are so crazy. Y'all listen. Hey, man. Hey. Now, this next story is crazy. Now, before I give y'all this next story about the Jesus painting. Let me be clear. I have no pictures of Jesus in my house. Um, because personally, I don't think that's appropriate, especially if we don't know if that's what Jesus looked like. Not judging anybody with Jesus pieces, not judging anybody with pictures of Jesus in the house, because you're obviously doing it to be, uh, you're obviously doing it with the right intentions. Right. Um, but, that still doesn't, even though I don't have this in my house, I still don't take away with the goal of this is because Christianity is under attack in this country. Everybody. And I said this how many times on my live stream, people think everything is about communism and everything is about socialism and everything is about globalism. The only way to, for those things to be successful is if they successfully attack Christianity, how do they successfully attack Christianity or, or all Abrahamic faiths really? How do they successfully attack those things? They have to promote feminism. They have to promote homosexuality. They have to promote promiscuity. Uh, they have they have to promote uh, uh, adultery. They have to promote these things. Period. Point blank. <clears throat> so, with that being said, let me show you. U.S. Merchant Marine Academy covers up massive Jesus painting with white curtains after complaints. Now, this has been here. This painting here, if y'all can see it, has been there for so long. But but nobody nobody usually complains. This is how you know the world is the world. Uh, well, not the world. Western society in America specifically. This is how you know America is going just so far out the window, right? Look at this. This picture been here for years. Nobody complained about it. But now, but now they want it removed. Let's read. And by the way, this is from the Christian Post. Let's read a massive painting of Jesus walking on water will no longer be visible at the United States Merchant Marine Academy in New York after an advocacy group complained about the artwork in January 10 letter addressed to them uh, letter addressed to the superintendent um, founder of military religious freedom foundation issued a demand that they expeditiously Remove a massive sectarian painting illustrating the supremacy of Jesus Christ from the Elliot MC room inside w uh, Wally Hall, which serves as an administrative building at USMMA. Listen, listen, the outrageousness of that Jesus paintings display is only further exacer exacerbated by the fact that this room is also used regularly for US MMA honor code violation boards where uh, mission men are literally fighting for their careers and often even more as they face the shameful, I don't know that word, I ain't gonna lie, that ignominy word, I think that's how you pronounce it, of potential expulsion with prejudice if found guilt, bro. Bro, it, they called it a violation. And look what they, oh my goodness, I didn't even read this part. I'm about to go off. I am about, I'm about to go off. I ain't going to even cap with y'all. I'm about to snap. Let me try to zoom in on this. I'm about to go off. Let me tell you why. Watch this, y'all. Uh, 
He told the Christian Post his clients quite correctly believe that the display of Jesus painting is totally, uh, is obviously in violation of the clear time, place, and manner requirements of the no establishment clause in the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> Bro, let me tell you something. Let me give people a history lesson real quick. A quick history lesson. The reason why I'm about to give this history lesson, the reason I'm about to give this history lesson, right? Um, right here, establishment clause, right? I'm gonna give y'all a history lesson. This is the issue. This this is this is the issue when people um are allowed to believe that this nation is secular. Now, let me tell you something. Let's read the first line, even though this isn't the full one. I, I just want the full one. I'm just typing First Amendment. Now, let me tell you all the context of what we're about to read real here, right here. First off, I want you all to know that our faith is under attack. And the other side, uh, they are winning battles. They're obviously going to lose the war. But they are winning some battles because a lot of us are scared to stand up. And we actually, a lot of us actually promote this same stupid ideology that is just false. It's just false. Let's read the First Amendment. The First Amendment guarantees freedoms concerning religion and expression. Let me, Congress shall make no law. Let me try to zoom in a little bit more. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Uh, that, now, this is the part people get confused. People think that means you're free to worship whoever you want. You can be a Satanist. You can worship a cow. You can worship Dr. Fauci. People think that's what this means. That's because most of these people are ignorant. And the main people that peddle this silliness are people that call themselves constitutionalists. Let me tell y'all key words in this, in, in this First Amendment. First off, the key word is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Why was this put in the Bill of Rights? Does anybody know why? Why was this put in the Bill of Rights? Let me explain to you why. Nine out of 13 colonies in this country had established religions. The word religion here can literally be substituted with denominations. They view different denominations as different religions then, even though it was all under the branch of Christianity. Literally. Matter of fact, in these colonies, most of the uh, state churches, even after the Bill of Rights, was still federally funded for like another 30 to 40 years. So when this says Congress shall make no large bet in the establishment of a religion, the reason it says this is basically saying Congress can't make no law favoring one of the different sects. So you can't favor the Church of England or you can't favor the Presbyterian Church or you can't favor the Lutheran Church. It's talking about the specific denominations. This has nothing to do with Christianity overall. That's the con that's the true context of this. You can look at the history yourself. That's why John Adams in his letter to the uh, the the um, Massachusetts militia, he said the Constitution was written only for a moral and religious people. No founding father viewed this as a secular and or atheist document. This is the problem when people just do not know the context of the First Amendment or the Constitution at all. Establishment of religion implies that there were established religions when they passed this. The reason that it says it again is because there were literally established uh, churches in nine out of the 13 colonies already when the original Constitution was passed. And it didn't say states can't do it. It said Congress can't do it. The reason it didn't say nothing about states is because each state had their own religion, which is why even after this, have y'all heard of the Mormon, the Mormon war? Have y'all heard of the Mormon war? Let me, let me show y'all something. No, it's not the Utah one. Missouri. Let me show y'all something, man. 
This was well after, this was 1838. This was well after the Bill of Rights. A state, if, if you don't understand this, a state, the literal governor of Missouri kicked the Mormons out of his state legally. Do y'all understand what I'm saying here? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? They were legally allowed to kick out the Mormons out of their state. Look it up. Look it up. This is, this is what I'm saying. So when people say stupid things like this, the establishment clause of the U S constitution, the reason that they even can say this is because when the, when, when the Supreme court got the ability to interpret the constitution, how they saw fit, they started interpreting it. Uh, they started to interpret the first amendment, the, in the most atheist secular way possible, which was planned. And now we're here. People think, man, listen, listen, Nathan in the text that schools ain't never teach him this. You know why schools ain't teach you this? Because people are lying, bro. People are lying. This country is based on Christianity. The Constitution is based on Christianity, period. That this country wouldn't exist. People think the American Revolution was solely about taxes. No. It was in part a religious war to get from under the thumb of the church there. So they can... So they can worship how they wanted to worship without being forced to abide by the rules of the Church of England. Come on, man. <clears throat> Come on, man. And then y'all got a lot of these people that call themselves constitutionalists on the right. And they don't even understand what the crap the First Amendment means, so they misuse it because... The... Stop listening to these people. That's the problem. People are too confident in things they don't know. And they are so confident in things they don't know that they're not even willing to research what they don't know. My goodness. My goodness. And just to show y'all how far the left has fallen. By the way, the Christian post, if you don't like, listen, sign up for the Christian post. I was literally about to start a Christian uh, news site, but the Christian post do a good job because I don't have the time to search how they do. You know what I'm saying? I said they went to war over two percent T tax. That's that's not all they went to war with at all, bro. Do your research. It was in part of it was a part of a religious war. Period. They wanted to get from under the, the Church of England, which is why it was so necessary for each state to have its own established church. Well, not a, not a, so it was in part of a religious war. That's that's what they don't tell you. You know what I'm saying? This is just this is just this is just common sense. Uh, but let me tell you how disgusting this this country is. Listen, I love this country. I was born in this country. I was raised in this country. Uh, we're, we're one of the only countries with free speech. We're one of the only countries that are allowed to have our Second Amendment and things that I love. But this country has turned, turned into something unrecognizable. And I don't think it's becoming that way. I think we are here. This country is unrecognizable. If you tell, if you were to go back and tell the founding fathers or the Puritans or anybody about what our country looked like now, they would probably pitch you, burn you at the stake and chop your head off for saying something so crazy. They'll view you as demonic. And you just told them stories about what was happening in our country today. Um, Western culture is on the fall, like downfall period. Um, and the United States, we're literally leading it. Um, you know what I'm saying? We are really leading the charge. Uh, so U S is the worst country for pushing extreme gender ideology, sex change surgeries on youth. How disgusting is this? How disgusting is this? Do not harm other people that did the study. They are um, healthcare professionals, physicians, medical students, yada, yada, yada. This is giving you background information on the people that did the study. Uh, released the research, uh, and, it, and, it is, and it went over most countries in Europe, and it says extreme gender ideology drives the United States to provide transgender medical care to younger children while Europe goes a safer and more scientific route. Uh, so we're even worse than Europe in this in this case. My goodness. My goodness. T 
y'all, this country's falling apart. What are we going to do about it? And uh, another thing I'm going to start doing, because I I, I I wake up and read the news every day. But you know what I started saying? You know, I'm reading the news and I'm reading the, the you know, the updates of Art's faith being attacked. So what I did this morning is I looked for other influencers on the right to see, to see if anybody is talking about how our rights and, and Christianity is truly under attack. And, and I don't see it. Everybody is focusing solely on politics. And I understand that's what gets the clicks on the right wing. Cause a lot of right wingers are becoming more secular and people don't think people still care about our faith being under attack. But I think a lot of us do. And with that being said, I am going to talk about it. We are disgusting. We are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. We put in something called gender ideology. You take this gender ideology to anywhere else on the face of the earth outside of Western culture, you will be laughed at. You take it to Nigeria, you might get killed for talking about some stuff like this. You take it to the Middle East, you're getting tossed off a roof. Wee! You take it to Africa, I don't know what's going to happen. And we think it's normal because it's being pushed down our dang on throats and, and the rest of us quiet because we say the Bible say, don't judge Bryson. Don't judge. Obviously out of context. If you read Matthew seven, once again, I've said this a million times. If you read Matthew seven, it's telling you not to judge as a hypocrite. That's why, that's why you get the verse five in Matthew seven. It says first take the plank out of your eye. Then you can see clearly to take the plank out of your brother's eye. So it's telling you when you can judge properly. And we're out here talking about sex changes. You can't change your sex, nor can you change your gender. And a lot of uh, conservatives are giving the word gender away. Like, gender doesn't exist. No, yes, it does. Gender gender, gender is, is a very old term. And it's just another word for sex. Some weirdo named John Money. Y'all look this up. Look up who John Money is. John Money is the reason people started trying to switch the definition of gender and talk about what it means. Look him up. Look up the studies he did to tell you that people can identify as another gender. Look up the studies he did on children. These are people that the left follow. This is where the left gets their entire doctrine from. It's not only the left. A lot of y'all right-wingers that be calling Blair White a she- because she's on our side. So I don't mind calling her she if she on our side. Demons. Demons. A lot of you. Demons if you do that. Look up where people like that get their ideology from. It's from John Money. Look him up. John Money. Look up the studies he did on children. Disgusting, filthy person who literally pioneered this entire thing where you can be a different gender. It's evil. All this stuff is evil and it's being pushed on us. And the fact that we're, we're leading out of the 11, out of the 11, uh, countries, you know, the Europe countries versus us, we're actually leading in this. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Who can you need? I'm sorry. Y'all my fiance needs her keys. I, th I think I put it back in your room or something. I don't got it. I said, Blair White is a man. Yeah, Blair White is a man. Grown man. I knew it was a man as soon as I saw him. And here's the debate with Candace Owens. I was like, hey, that's a boy. Somebody said, what was his name? John Money. Let me, I can show y'all real quick. I'm not going to go deep into it because I've probably already been on. I've been on here 40 minutes already. I'm trying to get through all this stuff. Because um, I, like I, I feel like I got news that a lot of people ain't talking about. But uh, I can show you who John Money is. He has his own Wikipedia page and everything. Here he goes. This is John Money, ladies and gentlemen. This is the man who... This is the reason people talking about their different genders. This is a weirdo and he's a pedophile. Oh, it tells you right here. John William Money, a New Zealand psychologist, sexologist, and author known for his research into sexual identity and biology of gender. He was one of the first researchers to publish theories on the influence of societal uh, constructs of gender. Literally, he is the author of this. This is a, 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 a pawn of Satan. Uh, anybody can look him up, look up his story, spread it around everywhere. Cause a lot of conservatives still do not know who this person is. Matter of fact, a lot of these people y'all probably watch, y'all get y'all news from. They probably don't even know that this even exists to be honest, not to throw shade.
<clears throat> but, you know. But you know, Richard with the five dollars, uh, in my opinion, Rabbi Asher Meza would make for an interesting interview. He converted from Christianity to Judaism. Um, he's also a proud boy. Hmm. I'll, I'll look into him. Thank you so much for the five dollars. Now, I, I feel like I ran on too many rants, so I'm sort, I'm sort of, I'm sort of like low. Um, let me say another thing too. Now, this might offend a lot of y'all. Uh, this this next story I'm, I'm gonna get into. But I am showing it. Just, 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 just bear with me now, because this, this is a real story. This is a real story right here. This is not in the U.S. though. I don't think so. Christian man is facing prison time for sharing his for sharing ex-gay testimony in first of its kind conversion therapy case. I know conversion therapy is a is a very uh, interesting subject. This is a guy here. The reason this is interesting because this guy willingly took conversion therapy and stopped being gay, and they're trying to pit him in prison in the UK. They're trying to pit this man in prison for talking about how he stopped being gay. <laughs> Yo. A Christian charity worker is facing criminal charges for allegedly discussing and promoting so-called conversion, conversion practices after he shared his ex-gay testimony during an online media interview. According to Maltese laws that prohibit conversion practices, if found guilty, he could face a punishment of five months in prison and or a fine of $5,000. And he's being targeted by, of course, a gay rights movement. Duh, of course. I mean, this is all gay people do. You know, the funny thing about it is a lot of y'all think all they wanted was equal rights. All they wanted was rights. No, they did they did they didn't want rights in the beginning. If they wanted rights, they didn't have to use the term marriage. They could have literally did another thing that was already in place and they could have just added uh the same things married couples got. And to them, they didn't, they, they didn't, they wanted to defile the marriage bed. They wanted to disrespect Christians because they feel like they're at war with Christians. So they attack Christians every chance they get. And you either submit or you get your lives ruined. That's how the LGBT mafia operates. And what do we do? We just sit here and, 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 and do it. And this man's about to be thrown in jail for simply getting his own conversion therapy. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. I mean, <laughs> what y'all want me to say? Y'all are looking at it. I'm showing y'all articles. And I'm going to start in this. I'm going to start reporting on this stuff like just as much as I'm reporting on politics. I feel like this aspect of it is more important. People are being persecuted across the world. And we're sitting here thinking it's a virtue to just shut up. You know what I'm saying? To just shut up. That's what we want to do. We don't want to do nothing. Everybody just be quiet. We don't have to stand up. We don't have to do anything. We just have to be quiet. We don't have to be. We, we just have to be quiet. Now, the last two things is more um, political related, and I want to show y'all some. So, on Twitter today, I got attacked from two different sides of the same coin. Very odd. And I'm about to explain to y'all what I mean by that. So, earlier today, I'm I'm looking for it now. I posted about it. <clears throat> so, if you didn't know. This article came out about Ron DeSantis. Let's go to him. Ron DeSantis, secret Twitter army of far right influencers. And long story short, by the way, everybody knows this goes on behind the scenes. I'm not saying that Ron DeSantis is specifically guilty of it, but these are actual conservatives trying to expose him for it because they were, um, because they were approached with this. And uh, basically, it, 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 it goes through people like Jack Murphy, who's filthy, disgusting. And there isn't, they're, they're possibly paying these people or they're using these people to promote Ron DeSantis to get him more views and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they, they talk about p potentially being a, bar, a bot farm. And um, the reason I posted it is because one of the people that was supposed to be on DeSantis 18 is, let me show y'all. Or did I pass it? I couldn't have passed it. Hold on. What the world? Hey, it just kicked me out of the article. What a weirdo. Um, bro, it just literally kicked me out of the article. It's 
Screw you guys. Okay, so it's not letting me do it, but I can tell y'all who it is. In the article, it's saying that he also has Christian Walker on board with him. And Christian Walker is Team DeSantis because he was basically, what the article says, basically hired to be on Team DeSantis. And I posted it because I was very disappointed. Um, I was never a DeSantis fan, but I, I was keeping up with what DeSantis did because he was saying the right things, he was doing the right things, and he hasn't been pandering to the LGBT as much. Now, granted, this is the Daily Beast, but the people they got the information from were conservatives. So the question is fairly simple, right? The question is, is it true? Because if it's true and he's tapping on people like Christian Walker and Christian Walker might be the gayest person I ever seen in my life. I, I don't, I don't even know a liberal that's as gay as Christian Walker. Um, the way he even like, I, I've seen him in real life. This man walks gay. Um, he obviously talks gay. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to unite with hum, human beings like that. Hopefully he finds God and repent, obviously. But until then he is one of the gayest people I've ever seen in my life, in my life. And, um, granted he had a bad relationship with his father growing up, which is so typically, which is typically the case with these types of people. Uh, I, Christian Walker is one of the only people I have muted on my timeline because his videos made me cringe that much. Um, now what's very interesting though, is that if Ron DeSantis is hiring, uh, hiring people like that to be on their team, the Ron DeSantis is no different than any other Republican, no different. They pander to the LGBT. They don't want to stand up for Christian values. They pander to Christians a little bit, but then their fruit show different. And I can only judge by the fruit. Hopefully this isn't true, but it does seem to be true from people I've talked to behind the scenes. So, and I'm going to be clear. Let me make my statement clear. I do not plan on supporting anybody that supports the LGBT. Because it's, it's, it's not popular amongst Republicans yet to support feminism. Um, even though Tommy Loran is a, is a is a feminist by any stretch of the word, but it's still not the popular theme amongst conservatives. Uh, it is not popular amongst conservatives quite yet to support abortion, even though a lot of conservatives are becoming weak on abortion be, on the word solely of Donald Trump. But on the LGBT topic, um, a lot of people have really switched in the conservative movement, and um, I refuse to switch with you. Um, I have blogs I wrote in 2013 while I'm preaching the same thing. I didn't change for Democrats, which is why I left the Democratic Party. And I'm not going to change for Republicans, nor will I change for Donald Trump. Um, when the Bible says something different, then um, I may shift. Unfortunately, I highly doubt that is a possibility. So I am very disappointed with DeSantis on that. But I said that to actually sort of compliment um, DeSantis because if you know DeSantis defends rejecting AP African American studies and says indoctrination, a lot of people have been mad. And the reason a lot of people are mad because homosexuals has found the creative way to tie the homo movement to black people because the black people were literally oppressing this country on something we can't change or something we can't hide because we're literally black. Now, we're not oppressed anymore at all. So when people, black people claim they're oppressed nowadays, they're just literally lying to you because they make terrible decisions and they need somebody to blame for their bad decisions. But we were once oppressed in this country. We literally weren't allowed in restaurants because of our skin tone. Now, that being said, when people try to tie the gay homo movement to the uh, black movement, uh, I think that is disgusting, and the fact that black people allow it is, wow, it is very degrading um, because you don't have to be gay. Like, gay is not something inherent. Uh, science already proved there's no gay gene. Uh, you can't really be born gay. Um, so it's totally different than just flat out being black. So when people try to connect gay movement to black movement, they're trying to do it because they, they have to use black people as stepping stones. But if you black and get out of line with the LGBT, they'll attack you too. As you saw with artists like the baby and uh, as you saw with a lot of other artists. So with that being said, 
stop letting homos uh, dictate what we do. And this is the perfect example in this, because in this situation, uh, what DeSantis actually talked about and what DeSantis actually said is he doesn't want to, you know, the concern was black queer studies, as you can see right here. Let me, Ooh, I did a little bit too much. The concern is black queer studies because DeSantis said he doesn't even like this. This is not a part of black history. He said, if somebody pushing an agenda on our kids, why, like who would say that that is an important part of black history is queer theory. It isn't queer theory has nothing to do with black folk. Matter of fact, statistically black people are the most homophobic people based, but black people are the most homophobic people. Why is queer history a part of black history? This is, this is, I hate to say it. For anybody that followed me long enough, I hate the term racism. I think the term racism is gay. I think if you use it, period, it's gay. I usually use it for Democrats, but I think it's also gay. So what I'm about to say is about to be low-key cringe. But, like, if anything could be called racist, they're trying to force a bunch of Peter Puffers, their, 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 their agenda through black history. A bunch of Peter Puffers. A bunch of British cigarettes. A bunch of fudge packers. Spaceman for $10. Thank you so much. Too few people speak truth like you. Thank you. A bunch of weirdos. We're allowed them to push their queer theory through black history. Are y'all, what? Boy, what? I cannot scream racism for the for, for, for one time. A bunch of Pete Booty judges. We're letting them push their agenda through black folk. Bruh, come on, bruh. What we on, cuz? What we in? What we letting them push that through our stuff, dog? Come on, black folk. Where all the pro black people at? I'm blaming y'all. Where y'all pro black folk at? That's black power over everything. Where y'all at, bruh? Where y'all at? Because a lot of truly pro black people, they are conservative by nature. The true pro black people, not the Black Lives Matter, because we all know Black Lives Matter was started by a uh, by a group of lesbians, lesbians, a bunch of obese lesbians. So opinion is invalid. We're not talking about those pro blacks. You know what I'm saying? I, I've had classes with Black Lives Matter and all their signs never just say Black Lives Matter. It's Black Trans Lives Matter. It's Black Queer Lives Matter. It's never just Black Lives Matter. Where y'all pro-black people at? I'm calling on y'all. Somebody get 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 them up in here. Get them up in here. Because uh 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 10 minute warning. Oh my goodness, what time is it? Oh, okay, I'm gonna be on here like three more minutes. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. This stuff is irritating me. <laughs> this stuff irritating me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This stuff is irritating me. But listen, where are y'all at? The Peter Puffers are trying to push their theory into black history. What, what are y'all doing? How can we let they go pick by next year? They gonna have Martin Luther King in a dress. They're going to have a statue of Martin Luther King in a dress. They come out with some story that Martin Luther King was non-binary. That's what they're going to do by next year. They're going to have Malcolm X with makeup on and say that he truly identified as pansexual. Somebody put a stop to it, Lord. Put a stop to it. Goodness gracious. These people are taking control of everything. Okay, last news is some light news. I'm just gonna end it up. I'm just gonna end it up like this. Then I'm gonna say a few words. Um, and I'm using this because y'all know the left. They're the morally correct people. We're the violent extremists. We're the insurrectionists. We're the bad people. We're the ones trying to harm everybody. We're the ones bringing violence to the country. Right. I find it so funny because a woman just pleaded guilty to mailing to mailing rice to President Trump in 2020. If you don't know what ricin is, then first off, that means you never watched the TV show Breaking Bad. If you don't know what ricin is, it is a poison that can literally 
kill you. Uh, that's what rice in this. And a woman actually pleads guilty to mailing rice into President Trump in 2020. So the beautiful, brave, morally correct people of our society that claims everyone else is literally Hitler, they're the ones that's literally trying to kill off uh, people that they don't like. So far as, you know, President Trump. Goodness gracious. Ricin laced letters to address to President Trump at the White House and eight Texas law enforcement officials in September 2020, the Justice Department announced. She literally tried to mail this. And they actually wrote, they actually found parts of the letter. I found a new name for you. The ugly tyrant clown. So brave, so beautiful, so amazing. She was a computer programmer. Give up and remove his application for this election after writing on Twitter earlier that month. Kill Trump, she said. Oh, my goodness. And proposing that someone should please shoot him in the face. So beautiful. I made a special gift for you to make a decision, her letter stated. If it doesn't work, I'll find a better recipe for another poison or I might use my gun when I'll be able to come enjoy free rebel spirit. Oh, y'all liberals. Y'all show y'all true colors so much. Y'all show y'all true colors so much. So y'all true colors so much, man. Listen, um, I had a few more things I wanted to talk about today, but that's pretty much ended. Christians, it's time to stand up. All my lives are pretty much in with the same sentiment. Christians, it's time to stand up. These people are crazy. Stop letting these people morally bully you. Stop letting them scare you of words like homophobic, extremist, inter- insurrectionist, racist, uh, bigot, transphobic. Let me show y'all something. I got to show y'all this before I go. Hold on. Do not leave. Nobody leave. And hit the like button. Hold on real quick. Y'all, I'm shooting a music video. I'm shooting a music video soon. I bought I bought a cape for my music video. Let me see if y'all can see it. Look at my cape. Look at my cape. <laughs> Look at my cape. We lit on me, cuz. Look at my cape, man, from my music video. I can't wait to shoot it. <laughs> Yo, get the likes up, man. Listen, before I go, once again, switch to America.com. They actually got beef on there now. They said it's going to send me some, so I can't tell you how it tastes yet because I haven't had it. But I can tell you I use a body wash. I can tell you I use their lotion a lot. Um... They eat the popcorn. They send you a box with a bunch of crazy stuff and they ain't going to cap. Switch to America.com. If you want merch, BrysonCreates2.com. Um, and by the way, if you don't know, I got a, a music video coming soon. Obviously, I just told y'all one of the props from the music video. Uh, also, me and Tyson got something special coming probably next week. Also, if you live in the Chicago area, I will be performing with Topher and Forgiato Blow in Chicago in February. Uh, uh, God Save America tour. Make sure y'all get out there. Um, and always Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all His righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Uh, we only cracked about I think. 260, 280 was the highest we got. So I might not like this time frame, or it may be because of the day, because it is a Wednesday. I might try this exact time frame again tomorrow, and then I'll get my schedule right, y'all. Like, just give me like a few weeks. I'll get an official, I'll get an official uh, schedule uh, correct. Uh, but I love y'all, even the haters. God bless y'all. Um, I am out of here. Remember, God.